Good morning, Sonic community. Welcome to Tuesday morning, where I hopefully will not mess up this intro too bad. It's Pastor Andy coming to you live from my office here at Sion Lutheran Church, located in Lancaster, Minnesota, not to be confused with Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Today, I, I'm still kind of getting like get back in the groove of things, but on my mind a lot lately, and apparently a lot of people's minds, is the Super Bowl halftime show. Now, I'm not here to make value judgments or anything of that sort. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I caught the Super Bowl halftime show yesterday uh, via YouTube. I watched it. Um, I thought it was fine. Um, I'm kind of a fan of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Not so much. I don't really know Kendrick Lamar that much. I'm not a huge fan of 50. Mary J. Blige is awesome. Uh, Eminem, you know, summer, summer in the middle. But the thing is, the the emotional upheaval that I've seen on social media and heard about in places just kind of baffles me. Where it it's a piece of entertainment. It's it's not life or death. It's not a value statement. It's it was a 13 minute concert that cost a lot of money, but it also employed a lot of people. Um, it takes a lot of logistics to pull off something like that in 13 minutes. That's kind of a, a huge accomplishment, I would say. But then again, like it, it is what it is. Like it's a Super Bowl halftime show. Like if you didn't watch the Super Bowl, you weren't invested in the Super Bowl, then you probably missed it. Like I did. I watched a little bit of the Puppy Bowl. Because who doesn't like cute little puppies playing with toys running around a, a turf field? You know? But if you didn't watch that, that's your prerogative. Like, it is what it is. And then when, like, I, th I start pondering this. It's like first world, western, developed problems. Like, that's what we're worried about is who performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. There are bigger concerns in the world. There, we're still in a global pandemic. People are still hungry. People are homeless. People are abused. People are just all kinds of bad stuff is happening to people all over the world. And we're worried about the halftime show of the Super Bowl. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me, but I don't know what to do with that, you know, because I fall into that trap with other things. It's not the Super Bowl halftime show that I worry about. It's whatever streaming on Hulu. Like, why can't they pick better shows? Why is this? Why is that? And like, no, like as Christians, we, we have a clear directive. It's to love our neighbor, not complain about things, I think. But we're really good at that. So somewhere in there, hopefully there's a challenge or an encouragement or something that you can pick out and run with today. Um, with that being said, I, I have this new book that just came out by uh, Joe Davis, who is a, a touring artist, educator, spoken word artist out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He just put together a book for graduates it's Poems and Prayers for Graduates. It's called We Rise Higher. Um, I haven't really checked it out, but I found this one to be interesting. And so hopefully I don't get in trouble for reading it on Facebook Live. But it's called Commercial Break, a poem about self-worth from Joe Davis, found in We Rise Higher. It says, we interrupt your regularly scheduled program for a commercial break, or for all our sakes, a break from commercials. Before it's too late for me to escape, the irresistible urge to splurge on the new shoes with the new shoelaces, new blue jeans, and new tee that matches my new blazer, new watch, new shades, and a new bracelet. Consumerism is consuming me with five easy payments. But don't gain the world and lose your soul. You got something inside more beautiful than all the riches you could own. Don't be bought and sold. Don't be bought and sold. Don't be bought and sold. 
don't be bought and sold. We try to put a price tag on the price list. They couldn't tell you what the value of life is, but if they could sell it, everybody would buy it. That's my guess. Why do I buy products without thinking of the byproduct? I think I need it. I want it until the next week after I got it. Then I forget about it. If I'm honest, confessing, I act as if accessories are necessary when some folks don't have access to necessities. Unless I've agreed, there's a greed that gets the best of me. There, there will always be a need for those who have less than me. But don't gain the world and lose your soul. You got something inside more beautiful than all the riches you can own. Don't be bought and sold. 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 A culture of merchandise hurts our pocketbooks and purses, but our hearts takes the worst hit when we worship these purchases. The more we yearn to gain, the more we waste in this evasive chase. Our search for worth is purposeless until we come to terms with this. God's love for us is perfect and there ain't no earning it. So don't gain the world and lose your soul. You've got something inside more beautiful than all the riches you could own. Don't be bought and sold. 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 Amen. And then he follows it up with an invitation that says, take a break from screens for a few hours or a few days. Start a new project to work on an old project that's unfinished. Take a walk outside. Explore, experiment, express. Go on a new adventure. And with that, remember you are beautifully created. You are beloved children of God, blessed to be a blessing, and that blessing has nothing to do with what you watch on TV. It has everything to do with how you engage your neighbor. So be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.